something that would be do justice to what I've just heard. Not because of who I am or what the relationship with uh, the Lord Jesus has been as we've walked together along the road, but the fact that you people understand what it means to sing with broken bread in our hands and your word of fire in our hearts, we proclaim our own mystery. And in the journey of faith, you see, we come to the place where the roads part. And as Robert Frost said, two roads diverge in the yellow wood, and sorry, we could not be both one uh, and be together. I could be only one traveler, and I took the fairer road and the yellow road that has made all the difference. Sometimes that's what life is all about. It's about choices. Now, I've been forced to choose, and you have too. I had no choice, basically, uh, because of the illness that I've had. Although I must say I have made a remarkable improvement since I stopped chemotherapy. <laughs> so let that be uh, uh, a lesson for <laughs> those. It doesn't always work for everybody. But we must move on now and build a new church. That's what you're all about. And one that gives me great pleasure to, uh, to deed on to the next uh, pastor of the church because you are the people who make that church go. This program, this service of worship, was a service of worship created by and developed by the people of the church. We especially appreciate the work of, of Darlene uh, Waters and Cass Young and uh, Rob Gunlock, of course, and each one of the members of the choir and all of those making presentations or leading the church itself at this time. But one of the persons who has given us the next uh, uh, goal to espouse to is George Nassner, our new council president. George, as president of the council, reminds all of us that it's going to take everybody, everybody, all of us, uh, to build uh, the church. We can't build it alone. It can't be built by one person. It's got to take the time and the talent and the skill and also the commitment to everybody, uh, of everybody, to build this church. That's why I'm so proud of you as I heard you read the scripture. Hear the word, pray and share the ministry to the sick. And those who need God's healing love <laughs> including incidentally myself. And remember Father Joe, who has always been there for me at the hospital and, all, and at the church. We're going to do a little thing. We're going to celebrate Mass together on the 18th of September. How wonderful a joy that will be. Now when we choose, God will guide us. He will make a way where there is no other way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for you and for me. I will miss each one of you, but will always remember the tie that calls us together and binds us into one great church, one family of love. Now, this Father Joe and I would sing when we marched around the uh, neighborhood on Good Friday. We are not one body, one body in Christ. And we do not stand alone. We are one body, one body in Christ, and we do not stand alone. Now you have called a new pastor coming in September. I know you will give her all the support that she needs to be a great pastor, not just a good pastor, but a great pastor, because a great pastor is made by the church. Remember, uh, how much your pastor needs your support. I appreciate all the support and the direction and the, and the comfort that you've given me, and God bless each one of you. Uh, the, uh, I want to 
want to share with you uh, uh, a, a blessing that uh, is uh, from my own heritage as an Irishman. And it reads, Now may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. And the rain fall soft upon your field. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. God bless all of you and we wish you well as we go forward together along that road. That's it. <laughs> That's the old <laughs> That's the old In this age of technology, it was just so wonderful to hear personally from Pastor Armstrong his, his sentiments and his feelings and his love for all of you and your love for him. The, the cover that was picked out for your bulletin, Amazing Grace. As we sang that song, it said that the Inspiration for the words came from a gentleman by the name of John Newton. He was a sea captain of a slave ship, bringing slaves from Africa. And a storm emerged at sea. Everyone was going to perish. They prayed like they never prayed before. And Newton made a promise. Lord, if you save us, I'll change my whole way of living. They were saved, and Newton kept his word. God save a wretch like him, he said. Amazing grace, how great thou art. As Newton was a sea captain, so also Pastor Bob Armstrong was captain of his ship, this church, this community. This past summer, I had the opportunity while being on vacation to go on a fishing expedition, and I did happen to catch a shark. I recall to mind that over the years, and perhaps you may have heard the story about Pastor Armstrong and Priscilla up at their cabin on the lake, how one day they decided to go fishing. And Priscilla caught the biggest fish in the lake. And they're so excited that we're gonna have a feast, they're gonna eat it. And they prepared a meal and they were just so excited with full anticipation of what a wonderful meal this was going to be in sharing this fish. And that night they had it for dinner, only to learn the next day that there was a prize of about $1,000 for the biggest fish that could be caught in the lake. <laughs> it was the most expensive dinner Bob ever had. <laughs> as captain of his ship, he himself has entrusted the voyage to you. And I can only say with heartfelt feelings of being here this morning, of what a magnificent prayer you offered. 
expressing the sentiments of everyone, from young to old, of everyone who was involved in preparing this liturgy, of expressing your love, your sentiments, the love gifts, tokens from the heart, to your captain, to your pastor. Pastor Bob and I have had a wonderful working relationship, not only working together, but truly in being friends. In my nearly 30 years as a priest here in the Archdiocese of Baltimore, I've never found such great fellowship as they are among the churches here in the Canton Highlandtown area. And that's indicative of the spirit of the people. The people who show your concern, your love, looking out for one another and the needs of the community. Oftentimes it's said that when a person generally retires, it's a time to maybe get a little bit laid back. But I've come to realize, and you are so much aware of, that perhaps you're even more busier than you were before you retired. So as a chapter in Pastor Armstrong's life closes, a new chapter begins. Where the Lord we, takes him, we do not know. But we know that he goes with our blessings filled with faith, filled with a sense of satisfaction that he has done a job well done. Jesus says in the scriptures, well done, good and faithful servant, because you have been faithful to me in a few things, you shall be faithful to me in many. And so with our thoughts and the sentiments of so many people, not only here at St. Botts's, as I affectionately call it, but through the community, and the sentiments of the people of what Bob has done through his leadership. There's a saying in Canton, in the history, that you can take the person out of Canton but you can never take Canton out of the person. He's very much at home, and his spirit will always live here at your church and among the people. Uh, and uh, you were there to answer and to help me through this period of time, and to drive me to the hospital when that was necessary, and to do other sorts of little things that make the difference between life and death, between happiness and joy in such an illness. All these are gifts of faith. And what we have <clears throat> um, together uh, in the understanding of the light of the world, this is the light of the world as it works in darkness. And you have uh, shown your understanding uh, as a part of the call of Jesus. Yes, we shall share our mutual woes, our mutual burdens bear, but often for each other flows the sympathizing tear. Let us stand now and uh, honor Roy Jolbeck, for he is the light of the world. <laughs>